Hello and welcome to Photo Finds. This week is August 26, 2014. I'm your host, Nick Russo. Thanks so much for stopping by this week. Let's go ahead and get started. This week we are in Epcot. First thing we're getting a look at here uh, is what's behind these green scrims over in Future World. Just looks like some additional pathways are going in. Uh, nothing too extreme, but one does believe that something will go here except you know in addition to just a pathway because these are rather wide pathways they have entrances uh, that are smaller but they do expand into larger paths so maybe some seating areas or perhaps some merchandise locations who knows we don't we don't know yet but we will keep you updated on that what's in front of those green scrims are these kind of pine trees temporary obviously in potted in pots is it just me or I kind of think these could be used for uh, Christmas trees as well. Maybe they're growing these and uh, kind of killing two birds with one stone, if you will, using them as scrims or, you know, blockers, but also growing them for the holiday season. Maybe that's just my imagination. Here's another view of, as you can see, it's a more narrow path, but then it leads into a kind of wider brick area. Now, leaving Future World, we're heading into World Showcase, and we're in the Canada Pavilion, more specifically. kind of just want to show you the O Canada Circle Vision Journey show that they have here. Um, nothing new, but I haven't covered it yet, and I wanted to show you what goes on in this show. So you enter here after you go through this kind of rock formation and through these bridged areas, and you make your way inside this kind of waiting room. Very heavily themed, obviously. Here's what you can see from the inside. So against those windows there are the waterfalls that you saw a minute ago. And this is your view from the waiting room. They have plenty of paraphernalia up on the walls and up on the roof. After you wait there for several minutes, you go inside the theater itself, which has... Um, I don't know the exact number of screens, but they are surrounding you completely, and that's kind of the gimmick, if you will, of the show, the circle vision. So it's very unique in that way. After the show begins, you can see where the projectors are located, and they are in the middle of each... Well, they're in the middle of the, the screens, so this projector would be projecting onto a screen across the way, and there are... There, there are projectors for each screen, so it really gives you the full immersive experience. And the film pretty much takes you on a uh, journey throughout Canada, obviously, and it's it's very expansive, and it covers pretty much the entire country, and it's all hosted by Martin Short, and it's very funny. All right, heading over to Morocco, we have some of these uh, planter boxes on wheels and the green scrim, and... What they're blocking is some construction going on, presumably for Food and Wine Festival coming in September. Some vertical construction with poles going on there as well. It's a wide shot of that construction. Heading over to the Japanese pavilion, the Mitsukashi department store is what we want to get a look at. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Mitsukoshi or Mitsukashi since 1673 and we're heading in and like I said this is the Japanese department store it is a mock-up of the department stores that they have over in actual Japan they have some fans here uh, some clothing they pretty much cover everything I mean this is a pretty big store and they did an expansion so it, it didn't all it wasn't always this big but they they did do an expansion because Americans as you may know love Japanese merchandise some calligraphy or stationery, Japanese stationery here that you can try out and then purchase a plethora of music and they also have books which we'll soon see some bonsai trees ranging from you know the beginner starter sets all the way up unto the more expensive bonsai trees and plants. They have a whole mess of uh, Japanese uh, chopsticks. You know, not your traditional chopsticks, but well, they do have those, but I think these are more aimed for the kids up here who may not know how to use chopsticks quite yet. And here's a close-up of one of my favorite uh, sets. They have a whole lot of these, probably hundreds, maybe even thousands of different varieties of chopsticks here. They have a whole sake section and wine, sake and wine section over here by the checkout counter. 
Now, one of the more interactive and up close elements of the department store is this uh, is this clamshell pearl experience here that you can do with this cast member. You can pick out a a clamshell from this bed of of shells here, and what she'll do is take it apart and extract the pearl from the sh the shell, and then uh, tell you a little bit about it, size it up price it and then you can purchase it. Now I'm not sure if you have to purchase it after she does the presentation for you but it seems that way that she does the presentation and then directs you over to the uh, checkout counter. Here's some books that uh, are across the way from that uh, pearl experience. And then they have a whole corner dedicated to Hello Kitty because that is very popular as you know in Japan. We're going over here to the Italy Pavilion. I'm going to try to say this, Il Bel Cristallo? Now, what this store is dedicated to is jewelry and, and fragrances seem to play a big part in this store for both women and men's cologne. They also have some Italian merchandise, uh, I mean, clothing, excuse me, but not a whole lot of it in this particular store. Also a big part of the store, this had its own room, uh, these masks, very stunning masks, as you can see these uh, cast members in the bottom left, they are actually making the masks right in front of you, and then they put them on display for purchase, and they range, they have a whole bunch of variety here. And some on the table here as well, you can see the variety, and some up on the wall, they go from small to quite large. Heading out of Italy and over to Germany, I'm going to try this the name of this store, once again, Das Coffins. I think I butchered that, but... Oh, well, this store is dedicated to sporting goods and sporting clothing. Or more specifically, soccer or football, I believe is what they call it in Germany. They have clothing and shoes. Here's a look at one of the displays with soccer balls all around. Also, I don't think it was part of the sporting store, but over by the back, it's kind of all connected in these pavilions, where you can go from store to store without actually leaving the inside. That's how World Showcase works when it comes to their stores. But they have this uh, clock display back here, where you could buy these clocks, but I'm warning you right now, yeah, you can see the price tag on there for $900 for just one of them. Also, they had a toy store over here, and they have a toy store over here. This is nothing new, guys. These stores have been there for a very long time. This week, I just wanted to take you and show you a select few over in World Showcase. But anyway, they have a whole uh, toy store over in Germany. One of their featured items is this Playmobil, Dragons, and City Action. These are kind of comparable to Americans' Legos. Wide shot of that toy store. Now we're heading over to Norway, where Maelstrom was closed. There are rumors of Maelstrom actually closing for good in September. We haven't got official news of that, but that is kind of the rumor for a Frozen attraction. Now this closure that we're seeing right here has nothing to do with that, uh, you know, rumored permanent closure, but I think this was just some maybe refurbishment, which wouldn't make much sense. Maybe it was just a technical uh, downtime. Here is the gift store for Maelstrom. It's all themed, not themed, it's all aimed toward uh, Norwegian apparel, some windbreakers and more uh, warming clothes that they have here. Obviously not appropriate for Florida weather, except for maybe two months out of the year, but like I said, windbreakers and boots, all more cold weather items. They also have some accessories over here, some fragrances and bags. On this particular day, they actually had a featured fragrance designer uh, signing autographs. You can see a picture of him there in the center. This is his display. His name's slipping me right now, but they had a uh, sign up in the Norway pavilion announcing that he was there. They have some trolls, of course, some troll dolls, because that is the theme to the Maelstrom attraction. And the last thing I wanted to point out here was... Anna's ginger cookies here that they have, and, you know, one would think these are Frozen-themed because of the character Anna, but it's actually just a coincidence. These are these have nothing to do with Anna from Frozen. It's just a coincidence that this is the name of the uh, cookies. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week in Photo Finds. Nothing new this week, nothing new, particularly new except for those pathways. Just wanted to take you inside some of uh, my favorite shops over in World Showcase. All right, with that said, until next week, guys, have fun. Bye.